Hey there, it's Allison from Dreamweaver Designs Jewelry. I am here today to bring you a tutorial on how to create these beautiful, sparkly, holographic snowflakes. They are very simple to make, and I'm sure once you start, you won't be able to stop. <laughs> so let's get started. Okay, so the supplies that you are going to need to create these beautiful snowflakes is these silk screens from RJ Crafts, and that's this silk screen here. And you get six different sizes. This particular size is the second smallest. And then there's this silk screen, and that's this snowflake here. And I've also gone ahead and used the second smallest size. So you'll need those. And the cool thing about RJ Crafts is most of her silk screens come with coordinating cutters. So there they are. Totally awesome comes in all six sizes to go ahead with uh, using with the silk screens. I'm also going to be using RJ Crafts Easy Dome UV Resin today. I have not tried this out yet. I wanted to go ahead and be the first time in this video with you guys. You're also going to need polymer clay in the color of your choice and some paint acrylic paint we are going to be using with the silk screen i know that you see the sparkle here that sparkle is not coming through the screen this time the paint is going to come through the screen so for that sparkle you are going to need some fine holographic glitter and I should have had that ready to go before I started this, and I did not. But I've got it right here. And what I use is, this is through Color EFX. I found them on Etsy. And this is called Silver Stunner Holo. I'm pretty sure that this is like 0.003 super fine glitter. Um, it does fit through some screens. I haven't tried it through these because these are so detailed. If you have a big space, this will probably go through there, but when you're working with smaller areas, I usually don't try to get the glitter through there. So we are going to uh, do a veneer onto our clay with this glitter. And I think that's all we need. So let me get everything prepped and I'll be back. All right, I'm back. And the first thing that we need to do is to put the surface of down on our clay and that would be the holographic glitter. Now I just have these little jars that I like to take from the bag and put in here just to make it a little easier. So you just take a brush and you're going to dab onto your clay. And I chose to use some scrap white that I had, um, but you can choose any color clay that you want. I've got this rolled out to a four on my pasta machine, a one being the thickest. Uh, four is usually my setting that I use when I know I'm gonna use resin on a piece because the resin will tend to make it a little thicker. So I go a little thinner on the clay. So I wanna do two spots on each part of the clay. You don't need to put the glitter over all of the clay, just in two areas that you know will be big enough to use for your silk screen. And that looks good. Now what you do is you just take your finger 
and you rub it in lightly. And you do this until it becomes smooth. You don't feel the grit of the glitter, you just feel a smooth surface. And if you like this glitter, um, I will put a link, actually I'll put a link to all the, the um, things that I've used in this tutorial, like I usually do. So you'll find that down in the description. All right, so I think that's gonna be good enough because we're gonna put that there, that there, maybe put a little bit more over here. And the nice thing about this is whatever clay that you don't use, like in this one, this is what I use scrap, you'll have some glitter in it. So if you want some glitter in your clay, you will definitely have it. And I'm gonna do that for this one also, for our other snowflake. And I don't know if, you know, if maybe you knew this, maybe you didn't, but you can do veneers on your clay in paints or glitters or, you know, whatever you want. And you can still do a silk screen over that, even over foil that you've put on your clay. You know, you just need to be a little more careful in doing it, but you don't need just raw clay to use a silk screen. Um, you can do it over effects that you, you know, I think any kind of a huge texture, you know, bumpy or something like that, you aren't going to have a lot of luck because you need pretty much smooth for the silk screen to go on correctly. Otherwise, you might have breaks in your lines and stuff like that. Now, I see some spots that I've missed. Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention with the screens, I like to keep a tub of soapy warm, not hot, but soapy warm water off to the side because as soon as I'm done with my screen, oh, lo and behold, there's some sort of a cat hair or a dog hair. Um, as soon as you're, you're done with your screen, you want to go ahead and put it in that water so that you don't clog the minute holes in the screen. All right, so I'm just gonna make sure this is completely smooth. And it looks good. I'm gonna go ahead and get my tub of water, which I have right over here. And it'll be off camera, off to the side. I just slip it right in there and we're good to go. But oh my, look at that. Holographic glitter goodness. That is pretty. All right, now, before we get started there, you can use, I like to use metallic uh, acrylic paint for this particular project just because it adds even more sparkle, why not? Um, but you can use any acrylic paint that you want. You just don't want it to be super thick or super thin. You don't want it watery at all. Um, in this particular one, I am using, I love Deco Art Extreme Sheen Metallic Paint. They have, like, every color is gorgeous in this. Um, and this is the silver. Now, I don't have a light blue in this. So I'm going to make my own light blue by mixing these two paints. So let me move this over. I'm just going to put some silver into a palette tray. And a few drops of the blue. So that we have a lighter blue. And get a toothpick out to stir that up. And 
And now we have a nice light blue. Now, I'm not going to use that brush because I need a paint, just the end of a paint brush. Now, what I like to do when I'm working with just maybe one part of the silk screen is I like to put, this is just an old credit card, canceled out card. I like to put the paint on the edge of the card and rub it along the screen. So I'm gonna put that there for now and let's see, I think we will use this one up here. I think there's better room for that there. And then this one down here. So we'll go ahead and do this one first. Now with RJ Crafts silk screens, you want to make sure the side that you can read rjcrafts.com is facing you. Shiny side will always be facing down. Now you're probably saying you only have one of that size on that screen, but you need to make two of them. Well, that's when using a card, rather than laying the paint down and rubbing it over the whole thing comes in handy. I can just go ahead and quickly make another one and then go ahead and put it into my tub of water. So what I'm gonna do is find a spot, I think we'll do it. We wanna do it where that's not gonna be laying in the paint for the second one. So I think I'll put it right here. That'll be good. And it's nice to leave some of the clay open because that'll just give it just a, a small part to help hold it down. But what I like to do is usually pull it away from the area that it that it's stuck to. I don't know if that makes sense, but I'm pulling it away from that because it, it's not really gonna stick with that glitter there. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put some paint on this card and you don't need a whole bunch of it, but you wanna you know, put enough on where you're gonna get enough coverage. All right, and you're going to do this at an angle. So I'm gonna to need to move this because I'm running out of room. Because I want to turn this, I'm gonna bring it towards me. I'm gonna hold my screen back here so it doesn't move and pull towards me. And I'm gonna do it at an angle. So I get the paint down on the part that I'm silk screening. Rub it a few times and lift it up. Now I want to, ah! All right, now we want to put it down on this side. So we want to get some paint on here. Getting paint on my card and I'm going to do it away from me without getting it on the other snowflake. And you go ahead and pull it off and immediately put that in your soapy water. All right, all this extra paint on there, don't worry about that because we're gonna be cutting out these two shapes. That one's faint compared to that one, but that's okay. You can still see it on there, still looks really good. All right, now let's go ahead and do the other one, hopefully with out the glitches I had with the first one. And those glitches were just because of me, nothing else. So I'm just gonna wipe this extra paint off of the card. 
and we are going to go with this size and let's see we'll put it right there I've got RJ crafts where I can read it so I know I've got the right side go ahead and put some paint on my card easier for me. All right, go ahead and swipe it down. Hold it. Swipe it down. Lift it up. And we're going to do one over here so that we have two just because we can make earrings with them or whatever. Trying to make sure that there's going to be glitter under there. Without getting it on the one with the fresh paint. Which doesn't look like I can do that. Well, let's add some more glitter real quick. No big deal. And that will probably be dry by now, so it's all good. All right, we will put our screen right here and go ahead and get the paint on our card. And I'm going to turn it this way so that I can hold it down so it doesn't move. Make sure every part is going through. Pull it up. And go ahead and put that immediately into our water. And that's it. You saw how I fumbled a little there, which shows you, I mean, you don't have to, you know, work at supersonic speed. The paint, you know, it is going to dry. It is what it is, but um, it's not going to dry that fast. So... I was able, even in the time that I wasted and had to put more of the glitter on this one, I still was able to go ahead and do that with that screen. So um, I am gonna clean up real quick because I kind of made a mess <laughs> and I'm gonna get my, clean, my screens cleaned and I will be back. All right, I'm back and that gave, uh, that cleanup time gave time for this paint to dry on the screen. So what we're gonna do next is we are going to cut the silk, the uh, snowflake shapes out. Now, there are six in the set, and I used the second smallest. So I need to find the second smallest cutter, which is this one here. And what I have found out, the best way to line these up is with this area of the cutter, not this one, but this middle one. You'll be really be able to see those when you put it down on your clay. And then you just turn it, I'll show you, you turn it and you look and make sure that each one of this part here is lined up. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down on my clay, lined up with what I had shown you. And wowza, I think I got it on the first try. Amazing. 
So I'm going to go ahead and take my acrylic black. I like to use this just because it gives e even pressure when I push down. Go ahead and push down. And then I just kind of turn, wiggle up and down, side to side, which is going to help clean up the edges. And go ahead and take it up. Now we're gonna do the same thing with the other one. I'm gonna go ahead and line it up with this part here. And you'll see when you put it down and when you look inside, you'll see all the way around if um, you can see your paint or not. And this one's just a little off. So we'll just make a minor adjustment. Go ahead and turn it, and that looks good. Go ahead and put the cutter down. Wiggle, wiggle and jiggle. That helps clean up the edges. Go ahead and pull it up. All right, now we're ready for the next one, and that will be used with the second smallest cutter from this set. And that one, we're gonna do the same thing. We're gonna go ahead and line it up with this area in here, which will make it so much easier for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and put it down. And lined it up with that particular part. I can see that's a little raw. You just turn and look on the inside. It's kind of hard to show on camera because it's at an angle, but you'll, when you're doing it, you'll know. All right, and that looks good. So I'm gonna go ahead and even pressure. You don't need to use that. I just like to use it. You can use just your hand. Wiggle and jiggle, cleaning up those edges. And we're gonna go ahead with the next one and lining it up with that inner cut. And that's off. Turn, 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 looks good. Go ahead and push down, wiggle, jiggle, up, down, side, side. And there you go. All right, now we're going to just pull up our clay. And put that off to the side. And this is what we have. And I mean, you can touch these. It, you know, if you're touching it a little bit, that's fine. Got a hair, of course from a dog or a cat, can't get away from those. All right, now, these edges look really good. You, let me get a toothpick, I wanna show you something. Rhonda did, from Rhonda from RJ Crafts, uh, I believe it was yesterday or the day before, she did a video on how to clean up from her cutters. Now, I wanna stress, her cutters, it's not that you have to clean up your actual piece, but anytime you use a 3D cutter, because this portion of the cutter is not like razor thin like a metal cutter would be, it pushes some clay onto your tile or onto your work surface, not necessarily on your piece. So. If you've watched any of my other videos, you'll see that I always like to clean up after I bake. Um, just because it's easier for me, I usually don't like to manipulate my piece. It'll usually have mica powder or something on it that you don't want to smudge. So it's just easier to do it afterwards. Um, I mean, you can certainly do this be, you know, before bake, but I just want to show you this here, that's not connected to my piece. The cutter didn't leave that on my piece. The cutter pushed that clay down onto the tile. So, I mean, you can just 
smush that away if you want to, or you can leave it and do cleanup like I do afterwards. But the nice thing about 3D cutters is you can get so many different designs um, that you can't get in a metal cutter. I know when I first started using 3D cutters, I was skeptical because, you know, I wasn't, I knew that there wasn't that sharp edge like there is with a metal cutter and that there would be just a tad cleanup. But, you know, seriously, for the little bit of cleanup I have to do after bake, it is so worth it because I can get snowflake cutters like this, you know, you, you can't, you can't get those in a metal cutter. You know, you can't get these detailed designs in a metal cutter. There aren't that many designs in metal cutters. So this is wonderful. And then you can get silk screens to go with these cutters, you know, which is amazing. So, you know, I, I'm 3D cutter lady now. I, I, I probably won't go back to metal cutters. You know, naturally I'll use the ones that I have, but you know, there's really no metal cutter out there that, you know, that I want because I can get these really cool designs in these 3D cutters. And, you know, you take care of them, they'll last forever. So, you know, you just don't put them in the oven because, you know, they are plastic. They're made from plastic. So, you know, you just want to wash them after you use them by hand, but no big deal. So anyway, back to these. What I'm going to do is we've got hairs, as usual. <laughs> we have these all ready to bake, and I'm going to put them in the oven at 275 for 60 minutes, and I will be back. All right, I am back, and pieces are out of the oven, and they are cooled. So what we're gonna do is, since we are going to be using RJ Crafts Easy Dome UV Resin, I don't need to tape my pieces to a tile. Hmm. So normally I would have just left them here and done the first coating of resin and then taken them off the tile and then cleaned them up because leaving them on the tile stops them from curling. It's kind of like using tape. Uh, I don't need to do that. So we're going to go ahead and pop these off the tile. And we have just a tiny bit of cleanup. And that's basically just um, what was left on the tile, not necessarily the piece but because it was right there, it stuck to the piece. So I'm just gonna take my fingers and scratch that off. You don't even need to use a, um, a um, nail file to do this. Normally I would use a nail file. You don't even need to do that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and do that. And because I don't wanna bore the heck out of you guys, I'm gonna go ahead and shut the camera off and do this and I'll be back. I am back and I have cleaned up the edges on all of these and I simply used my fingernail to do it. Wasn't hard at all. All right, so I'm gonna put these down on my tile and we're gonna go ahead and, probably should have picked a cleaner tile, but I'm gonna go ahead and get the resin on them. You wanna make sure any kind of clay from cleaning up, that they're free of all of that. This one still had a little piece there. And this one still has a little piece there. All right, looks good. So we're gonna go ahead and start to resin our pieces. Um, 
Like I said, we're using RJ Crafts new Easy Dome UV resin. And I have a UV light off to the side out of the camera. Um, I use a 36 watt UV light. It has nine, I'm sorry, it has four nine watt bulbs. So we want toothpicks. And you're probably gonna hear a dog playing in the background with her toy. Anna, please don't do that right now. All right, so we have toothpicks. I've got two out, one to hold the pieces since I don't have them taped down to stop them from moving, and the other to um, smooth the resin out. Now, as I do with any resin, you start off less than more. You don't want it spilling over the edge. This is my first time using this resin, so we are both going to experience this together. But if it's coming from RJ Crafts, I'm thinking it's got to be pretty awesome. So here we go. I already like this. It comes with its own nozzle. So I'm going to carefully, okay. This, um, this resin is a lower viscosity than the resin that I'm used to using, meaning it's thinner. And that's probably part of what stops it from um, your pieces curling and, and all of that. And that's why you don't need to uh, put them down on tape. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to pull the resin to the edges. Anna, you don't need to play with your toy right now, sweetie. That's my big 100 pound well, 100 plus pound Shepherd. She loves her toys. Yep, there she goes, making noises. If it's not kitties, it's doggies. Or a dog, rather. We only have one dog. So I'm just pulling the resin to the edges without going over. Just like I did um, with the other UV resin from my last tutorial except the only difference here is we are not taping our pieces down because they're not going to curl or warp or bend or any of that. So it's kind of nice not having to, to tape it down. I'm excited. It takes a little longer to cure, but hey, I'm okay with that. No problem with that at all. It'll save me money and tape. Ha. All right. So I'm simply grabbing it and pulling. Not so much touching my piece, but more pulling the top of the resin with the toothpick to the edges. So you just want to Turn it and look at it and make sure that you've got it all the way to the edge. And that one was fairly easy because that piece isn't as intricate as this one. So now I'm gonna do one of these and then I'll do the other two off camera. So just put a little bit in the middle. Remember, start with a little bit, you can always add more. You just don't want it to overflow. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna pull some of this resin to each point. Just pull it to the points. The nice thing about having it on a tile is you can just turn it. All right, now I'm gonna start bringing it to the edges without going over. And it's a little trickier on this one because you have these points that are jutting out. But just take your time, you know, don't be intimidated with 
with resin. If it spills, just pick it up, wipe it off, and try again. Sometimes your spills you can clean up after cure, but if, you know, basically if you just take your time with the doming resins and don't break the edge by going over, it will stop at the edge. I mean, it's, it's meant to be a doming resin, so the only way it'll go over the edge is if you go over the edge and give it that little path to start doing it. So just make sure you just go to your edge and stop. So we're going to do one coat um, and we're going to see how that goes and if we want to do another coat we can. But we're just going to start with one thin coat and take it from there. Just going to each part making sure it's all covered. Anna, stop whining. You don't get your way, you whine just like a little kid. All right. I am gonna do these other two off camera and I'll be right back. All right, I am back and I'm gonna do this last one actually on camera. And then we'll go ahead and get it ready to put under the UV lamp. So I put some in the middle. And go ahead and spread it out. I hope that you all had a great Thanksgiving. Um, I certainly did. It is my favorite food holiday, that's for sure. And today we're looking at Cyber Monday. So I hope you're all getting great deals on the internet for things that you've been wanting or that you wanna give to friends and family. I know right now, RJ Crafts is having a great sale, so this would be a good time to pick up this UV resin and these silk screens and cutters and all of that. They have I mean, it's a good deal anyway, but then getting an extra percentage off on top of that really helps and is awesome. All right, we're almost done. And I'm already liking the fact that I don't have to put these down on tape. I do see some air bubbles that we're gonna need to finagle but you know, hey, you get those with all resin, UV or not. Um, the bubbles aren't bad at all though. So I think we have just this one left and then we're ready to pop some bubbles. All right. I see just a couple bubbles, so I'm gonna run my lighter over that. I see something right there, I don't know what that is. There we go. And a bubble there. And something, something. No, no, I guess that no, there's something there. A bubble. Go ahead and pop 
pop that. So since these are not glued down, or not, not glued down, but taped down, um, be very careful putting them into your UV lamp because they're going to slide on your tile. I don't know if that's a hair or what. There's like a speck there. Mm. Try and pull that to the edge and get it out. Get out of there. Okay. All right, these look good. I don't see any other bubbles. Everything looks like it's pulled to the edge. Sorry about that, I got a phone call. <laughs> it always happens when I'm trying to build, uh, tape a tutorial. Anyway, um, these are all set to go into the UV lamp. I'll bring it up a little higher. Looks really good. I'm gonna go ahead and put that in my UV lamp for 30 minutes and I will be back. Bleh, I will be back. <laughs> All right, I'm back and the pieces are out of the UV lamp and there was absolutely no bending, warping, pulling up, nothing. Look at this, these pieces are perfectly straight, rock hard. Yes, I am loving this UV resin. RJ Crafts, big thumbs up for me. <laughs> I am so excited. All right, look at this sparkle. Look at it. All the holographic glitter. Very, very, very pretty. I'm very happy about that. All right, I think I will probably put a second coat on here, but I don't need to bore you guys with that. You saw me put the first coat on. Um, I hope that you found this tutorial helpful. I hope that you enjoy the sparkle. And I hope that you wanna make lots of snowflakes because hey, you could use these as earrings, pendants, ornaments, magnets, put them on barrettes. Oh my gosh, there's just so many things that you can do with them with all the different sizes that you get. You can use them, these little guys, on your tags for your Christmas gifts. I mean, think about it. The possibilities are endless on what you can do with them all the different sizes. I am actually going to turn these probably into earrings. And again, I wanted to let you know that I will be doing a giveaway for one of these here. I will pick a winner in two weeks and you will have your choice of either this set of snowflakes or this set. And you can let me know if you want them as is, or I can turn them into earrings, or I can just drill a hole in them for you and you can turn them into earrings or two pendants. You can give them away as gifts. You can do whatever you want. You can wear them for the holidays, whatever you want to do. But I will announce a winner two weeks from today. And all you have to do is like, comment, and share this video. Share it all over social media. Get the word out. And I want to thank you again for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Hope you found it helpful. And as always, have a great day. Thank you.